Hey everybody, welcome to episode 13 of Mondays with Mooch. I really appreciate all of you for following, commenting, liking, and, and interacting. It's been really great getting to know and talk to a lot of you guys. Um, as you guys probably know from my social media, I'm working on writing a book, and it's expected to be out hopefully this spring. And we've created a mailing list so that anyone can click on it, put your information in, and it'll let you know when the book's going to be released, any sort of pre-sale um, opportunities and opportunities for autographed copies. So it'd mean a lot to me if you guys click the link and sign up on the mailing list. Today we're going to talk about how I met and ended up joining the Vagos Motorcycle Club. A lot of you know that I came from the punk rock and skinhead scene, and around 2005 I was kind of aging out of that scene, I was riding motorcycles a lot, and I was really, really interested in motorcycle club and club life. Now, I didn't know anything about this world other than what I'd read in books, but I didn't really know anybody that remembers the big clubs. Um, you know, the biggest club in, in Oregon was the Gypsy Jokers. So we didn't know much about, you know, Vagos or Moggles or anything like that at the time. But I, I knew that it was something I was really interested in. And, and, you know, just from riding motorcycles, I think from coming from probably that gang lifestyle and, you know, always having people with me, it was a big draw to me when I started riding. You know, the more I started getting interested in clubs, the more I started kind of looking out and seeing who was in my area and, and who was around and who I would see out. And the first club I met was um, a member from the club, The Outsiders. My girlfriend at the time was working at the motor clothes department at the Harley dealership, and in the parts department, there was a member of the Outsiders by the name of Red Eye who worked there. I was in there hanging out. I just bought a bike recently from them, and I was, you know, I'd go in there and visit my girlfriend for lunch and stuff, so I was starting to really get to know Red Eye. And one day, I just let him know of my intentions, that I was wanting to hang around, get to know the club, more about club life in general, and asked him just to kind of invite me out when they had some runs planned. And, it, you know, looking back, it was probably pretty funny that I was the one hitting him up all the time. Um, you know, constantly, hey, what's going on? You guys do anything when you're riding? Because I, I just wanted to jump in, man. I wanted to ride. I wanted to get to know as much about the scene as I could. And Red Eye was pretty receptive and invited me out. And I really spent a lot of time with the outsiders there for a while, and, and I learned a lot, man, and, and had a really good time with that club. They taught me a ton about old school traditions, about the motorcycle club culture, a lot about the history. You know, they had a really long history in Oregon with a lot of major clubs and all the Oregon clubs. So it was really cool hearing that. Getting to know the Outsiders was a super educational experience for me. They taught me a ton, like I said, about the history, just about um, club life in general, and a lot of protocols and traditions that were in the motorcycle club scene. And, you know, I hung out, I was hanging out with them a lot. We were going out a lot. We were riding a ton. Um, I was going down to the clubhouse quite a bit. And every week I'd go, while they had church, I'd stand out front of the clubhouse and wait, wait for them to get done so we could go ride or hang out. And eventually I was invited to prospect. And, you know, I, I didn't really know anything about prospecting or still really much about motorcycle clubs, but I knew I wanted to be in a club. And out of all the clubs in Oregon, I felt like this was the club that really uh, resonated with me, it was kind of the level that I wanted to be. And so I accepted the offer. And, uh, it, you know, it was a pretty eye-opening experience because as a hang-around, if you guys don't know, as a hang-around, you get treated as a guest and a friend. And a lot of times people are, you know, very cordial and polite. And you're like everybody's friend. But the minute you put on that prospect patch, uh, now you're a prospect. You're no longer anybody's friend. And you're working the whole time. You're putting in work. And people treat you a lot different. And I remember that realization the night I put that, that patch on. We, we rode to a bar. Um, and normally, you know, as a, as a hang around or as a friend, I'd be hanging out. But as a prospect, I was working the whole time. As soon as I pulled up, they asked me how many bikes were in the pack. And I realized, you know, I have to pay attention to who's coming and who's going and how many bikes are there, um, security and what members needed. And there was really a lot on your plate. And it was really cool because I learned a ton about, you know, a lot of the traditional prospecting aspects as well as security, paying attention to your members. There was a lot I learned through that experience. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Another really cool thing, too, is uh, the president at the time, him and I had gotten close, and we'd been hanging out a lot. And he knew, you know, I, I th when I was around clubs back then, I wasn't doing drugs or alcohol at all. And he knew that. And he, he told me, you know, in order to get, your, to get into this club, you have to get a vote from everybody. And he said, I will not vote for you if you end up getting into meth. And, you know, I don't think that's something I would have done, but it meant a lot to me that that was his aspect. And, and it's something I've talked about on other podcasts before that as I evolved as a, as a club member and eventually in the one percenter world, you know, I wanted to bring members in and I wanted to benefit them, their lives. I didn't want it to be something that hurt their life. Um, and he had that value back then when I first started hanging out, that he wanted this to be something good for me, something positive, and didn't want to see me ruining my life with drugs. So I took that, uh, you know, with me and kept it, the, you know, all through club life. And that, you know, I learned a lot of things with those guys. So, you know, that was a really, really cool experience I had with them. 
but you know eventually um like i said i was leaving still leaving the skinhead scene behind um i was going through a pretty bad breakup with a girlfriend i've had for a long time and it was really just time for me to get out of portland and try something somewhere new so um you know i've been prospecting with these guys for just a little while and it, like i said it was a cool experience and it also showed me how hard you have to work to get into a club um, i didn't have a car at the time all i had was my bike and so I would, I would ride to work all day. As soon as I got off work, I'd ride to the clubhouse, you know, mop the floors, take out the trash, empty the ashtrays, clean up. Um, and when whoever, you know, if anyone showed up to kick it, I'd hang out until I was released. And when I was released, I'd go home, I'd get some sleep, and I'd get up and I'd do it all over again. And then, you know, when the weekend came, we were usually going to a party or having a party. So I was up a lot, up late, didn't sleep a lot, and was just always working. But it really showed me, you know, what that lifestyle is like and if what is this lifestyle for me. So it gave me a really good glimpse on, um, you know, what it's like to be in a, in a, in a major club or, or what it's like to be in an outlaw motorcycle club. Um, even so much as one time we had a party like the night before Easter. And I've told you guys before, I come from a really big Italian family, so we do holidays together and everything. And I was expected to be down in Salem, Oregon for uh, Easter with the family. And the night before, the Outsiders were hosting this party and I was prospecting and I was working all night. And I finally got cut loose at 6 in the morning, just enough time to go home, change, shower up, change, and go hang out with my family. Um, and this really taught me early on that I need to find that work, the, the club and family balance, you know, work, family, club. Find that balance that worked for me because that's what the whole point of prospecting was, right, was trying to teach me how to make the club, you know, how to make it in the club world. And, I, and like I said, they, they taught me a ton. So they, they really taught me a lot, and I really appreciated my time with those guys. Eventually, um, you know, like I said, I was trying to leave the skinhead world behind, and, and I was going through a pretty bad breakup, and I really just thought leaving Portland was going to be what's best for me. I had a job opportunity in Carson City, Nevada, um, and so I went into a church, and I let them know that I was going to be leaving for work, and they let me leave in good standings. They even uh, offered to let me pick back up where I left off if, if, if I came back. So they were really cool to me about the whole thing. Um, and then they told me when I, hey, when you get to Nevada, here's some clubs that we're cordial with. And they let us know, you know, the brand of few righteous ones were some friends of theirs. So to go ahead and look them up and let them know that, you know, that I was uh, had been a prospect for the outsiders and, and uh, let them know I was a friend. So when I got to Nevada, that was going to be one of my goals. So one day uh, I boxed up everything I owned, which wasn't much, and I UPSed it down to Nevada. I got a military duffel bag and I packed it full of, you know, necessities and things I would need for the next couple of weeks. Um, in case my boxes didn't show up. I strapped it to my bike and I rode from Portland down to Reno and then over to Carson City. And that's all I had the whole time I was there was my motorcycle. So um, I spent a lot of time riding around out there trying to get to know what clubs were in the area, trying to see if I could find guys from these clubs that were mentioned before um, and just seeing what I could to try and find out, you know, how to get involved in the local motorcycle scene. And as I was getting used to it, I was starting to want to get out more, you know, and check out some bike nights and some other events. So I really started kind of poking around to see what was going on, what clubs were in the area. Um, and I met a guy from the Booze Fighters. And he invited me up to um, a Confederation of Clubs meeting in Reno. I didn't know much about the Confederation Clubs. I barely even knew what clubs were in the area. And I honestly didn't know anything about club life at the time. But I was excited to go and, and meet some new clubs. So I you know, accepted the offer and we, we linked up in Carson City and we rode up to Reno for this meeting. At the time, I used to wear, uh, you know, I wasn't affiliated with any club or anything. So I used to wear a black leather vest and then a sleeveless denim cut off jean jacket over it. Um, I just kind of thought it was a cool look, kind of vintage. And, and it was just the style I was into at the time, I guess. Um, and when I got up there, we had parked, the Booze Fighters had parked, and they said, okay, we're going to this meeting, just hang out here in the parking lot. And there was a lot of people milling around, hanging out, um, and, you know, get to know some people. So I was kicking it, and I noticed right away there was a lot of people dressed like me, but they were wearing green, and it was the Vagos. Uh, you know, I've heard about the Vagos a little, initially, when I first started really looking into the motorcycle club world, they had a website back then, and a lot of their website was like younger, you know, skateboarder dudes or, or cholos, and just, uh, you know, like a younger culture, a little different than I was used to from the Oregon biker scene. So I was kind of attracted to that. And so when I saw him, you know, I was kind of shocked. And my initial reaction was thinking, shit, man, here I'm wearing this jean jacket. I hope they don't think I'm trying to look like them. Um, but I didn't want to hide, so I just kind of kicked it. And I hung out there for the whole meeting. You know, I saw the, all the other clubs there. And I went in at the end, and I was introducing myself to some of the club members. 
because the outsiders were friends with some other clubs out there, the Righteous Ones, the Branded Few. There were some clubs that they were cordial with. So I wanted to make sure, you know, they got to know some of these guys. So I went around and I introduced myself, told these guys that I had been friends of the outsiders and I had moved down here. Um, and some of them took me around, introduced me to other clubs. You know, it was the first time I'd seen and met a Hell's Angel. Um, there was booze fighters there. There was just a ton of clubs there. So I went around the table, I introduced myself to everyone, and I was kind of hoping to hang out after the meeting was over. And all the clubs were kind of splitting up and going in their own direction. So the booze fighters had invited me out to catch some drinks there in Reno before they rode back to Carson. But I was really hoping to talk to the brand of Fewer the Righteous Ones first, just to let them know of my connection with the Outsiders and you know try and get to know them just because the Outsiders had told me to go ahead and look them up when I was there. So the Boost Fighters gave me some directions that were super simple, right? Like go all the way down the road, go through all these different lights and take a second left and you'll see the spot type of deal. So you know, this was pre-navigation, anything like that. So you kind of just had to follow directions to get there. So they took off and I was milling around looking for these other clubs and I didn't end up finding any. So I figured, okay, I'm going to go take off and I'm going to go check out this Boost Fighter spot. So uh, I was riding through downtown Reno, probably my first time riding or definitely was my first time riding through the area. And I'm trying to look for a bar, and I figured, you know, there's going to be a lot of bikes there, right? Um, and then probably a lot of green, because it was a booze fighter bar. So I'm looking for bikes, and I come up on a spot that it was blocked off. Like, the, the parking was blocked off, and there were some prospects standing out front. And it was dark, and I couldn't see really well. But I did see some green, and I saw a lot of bikes, like 30 or something bikes. And I figured, okay, this must be it. So I pulled into this parking lot, and as I pull in, I notice it isn't booze fighters, it's Vagos, and there's a lot of them. And I didn't want to necessarily just take off. Um, you know, I had too much pride for that. I didn't want to look bad. I was hoping I'd see these guys again in the future. So I just kind of sucked it up and, and backed my bike up to the wall and acted like I belonged there. So I, I parked my bike and walked up. And right away, a prospect walked up and asked me who I was and what I was doing there. And I just kind of told him that I just moved down here and I was just in for a drink. Um, and so I walked in. I didn't drink at the time. And I ordered a, I ordered a beer just so I had a bottle. And I went, stuck my back up against the wall and kind of kind of sat on a stool, but necessarily just on the edge of it and was just kind of surveying the scene. And at the time, uh, this dude, Awful Al, came up to me and he was I could tell he was trying to feel me out. But we had a really good conversation and it turned out he was a local Vago. He was one of the presidents of a chapter there. And we really hit it off, man. We started talking a lot. He gave me his business card. We exchanged phone numbers and I stayed there pretty late getting to know some of the guys. Um, and then, I, you know, I didn't want to bail on the booze fighter, so... They told me where the booze fighter bar was and I peeled out of there and I went and met up with them and we all rode home together. And it was a really cool night. It was my first time like feeling, okay, cool, I'm in this new area. I'm starting to get to meet people. And it's, you know, it was, it was pretty fun. Um, the next day I went to work, it was, it was my first day on the job and I told Al that it was my first day on the job. And at my lunch break, I got a voicemail and it was Al. And I was really impressed. It was Al calling to check in to see how my first day went, um, seeing if I wanted to hang out soon. They were talking about barbecuing. And it really, it really hit me. It meant a lot to me. You know, here I was down here with no new friends, and here someone was that I just met calling to check up to see how my first day of work went and was staying in touch. So Al and I started talking and hanging out a lot. And I started riding around with Al quite a bit. Um, and as I did that, he was introducing me to his guys. He was about to branch off and start this chapter called Border Town from Split Off from Reno. So he, he was introducing me to the Reno guys and the Border Town guys. And we started going a lot of bike nights and a ton of parties. And I was racking on the miles, just going back and forth from Carson City to Reno all the time. And as I really started to get to know them, um, you know, I, it, I, w I was pretty into it. They were, they were younger dudes. A lot of them were younger dudes. Some of them were from the, the skateboard scene. Some of them had, were kind of from the punk rock scene. And it was just a lot different than what it was like in Oregon. You know, Oregon typically, um, respectfully, but the guys were, I was like 25 when I was joining or hanging out with the clubs in Oregon. And, and these guys were all quite a bit older than me. So I felt it was almost a whole different generation, let alone a whole different world. And when I met the Vagos, there was a lot of dudes closer to my age. So I, I instantly felt like I fit in more. Um, I still didn't know anything about club life or about clubs in general, but I knew that I wanted to be in a club. And so I just started putting all my focus into hanging out with these guys. And once I really got to know them, I really started to like a lot of them. So I called my brother, who was still living up in Oregon, and I kept telling him how he's got to come down here and hang out with these guys and get to know these guys. So he started coming down on the weekends. He was riding his bike down, going on runs with us and hanging out. Um, and eventually he started hanging around with them too. And I talked him into moving, or he was going to start moving down there. And it wasn't, I don't know, it was a few months into starting to really get to know everybody and hanging out that we were offered membership into the club. And uh, what, what had happened was we were gonna ride 
us and Reno, well, all the northern Nevada chapters were going to link up, and we were going to ride down to Vegas for a big for a big Vago run. And when we got there, they were going to award us our patches. So we rode down there as regular, you know, hang around supporters in the back of the pack. Um, but when we got there, we were awarded our patches. They gave them to us and kind of rushed us off to a room and told us we had to sew them on our, on our <laughs> sew them on ourselves. So I was sitting there rushing to sew mine on because I wanted to go out in my patch and hang out. They'd actually given my brother one that was already sewn on in a vest, but the vest was too big. So he wore this vest that was a couple sizes too big for a while. Um, but anyway, so we put them on. We spent the weekend with everyone getting to know people. And we rode back to uh, Carson City and Reno as full patch members. And we spent, I think that weekend, we just spent the whole weekend on our bikes riding. We went up to Lake Tahoe, Virginia City. Um, Jeremy still hadn't even moved down to Nevada yet. And so he was uh, he, he was now a full patch holder, but he had to move. So he still had to go home, pack up his stuff, and come back. And we ended up uh, getting a place together, him and I. And we stayed there. We were there for about a year and a half as Vagos. We had a really good time there. I ended up moving back home to Oregon and transferring to a Vago chapter there. Um, I had a lot of fun uh, the time I spent in the Vagos. You know, Reno was a really cool place at the time. Um, there was pool parties every weekend. And, you know, the bars don't close and casinos. You know, we, we rode a lot, but we partied a lot, and we had a really good time, and I definitely don't regret my time in that club, and I made a lot of really good close friends in that club. Eventually, um, I moved back home to Oregon. I was working for another Vago who had a business up there, so I moved home for that. I could be closer to home and still have a job, um, and had a really good time doing that, and then eventually... Um, some things came up and, and I decided it was time for me to leave the club and as all of you guys know I ended up joining the Mongols so when my book comes out obviously I'm gonna have a lot more information in there about my time in the Vagos how you know why I left the club um, but today I just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of you know how I got involved in motorcycle clubs in the first place I get asked a lot from a lot of you um, about what it's like to join a club or what does it what does it take and the advice that I would give everyone, for, you know, based off of my experience, is spend a lot of time hanging around. Like, I was, I was a pretty naive kid, and I'm pretty impulsive, so I just jumped in headfirst because, you know, I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. Um, and because of that, I ended up being in two clubs before I found my home. And once I did, then I, I was, ended up being in the Mongols for 14 years because that was the right fit for me. Um, but my advice would be hang out, you know, get to know everybody, see how they treat each other, see how they treat each other's women, see how they treat the prospects. Make sure it's something that, um, you know, goes with your values and, and you know, and your, your kind of lifestyle. Make sure these are people that you would hang out with, patch or no patch. Um, that was one of the biggest lessons I learned through everything was outside of this club, what do we have in common? and find something find a place where you fit where you have a lot of things in common and if it wasn't even if it wasn't for the patch these are guys you'd be hanging out with and riding with anyways so that that would be my takeaway from everything i know um you know it's kind of frowned upon to go from club to club and i completely understand that but i learned a lot from both the clubs i was in before i was the Mong in the mongols and i took what i learned with me and i think that made me a better mongol so I don't necessarily regret anything I did, and I learned a lot along the way. Um, if I was to redo it again, like I said, I would just spend a lot more time hanging around and getting to know everything to see if this was the right fit for me. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for checking me out, for tuning in and checking the show out. I really appreciate it, and stay tuned for more content. As uh, time progresses and I'm really working on this book, I'll think of some stories to share, and I'll jump on here and post them. In the meantime, please make sure you join the mailing list for the book, and then uh, make sure you keep following. Thanks, everybody.